Colin Ames. I'm a security researcher for Attack Research. And research twice. Um, I do a myriad of things. Speaking at conferences is one of them from time to time. And I'm Dave. I'm not here. So I get to do his part. Should be exciting. Um, I apologize now. <laughs> All right, how many people here are familiar with Meterpreter? Woo! All right. Fabulous, and I won't actually have to talk too much about this. We'll just skip all the way to the end. All right, so a big thing that we're going to be covering is first generic usage of Meterpreter and then advanced usage of Meterpreter to get you a better idea of how deep you can go and what you actually have available to you. Because in most instances so far, we've seen people not really leveraging Meterpreter to any of its power. <laughs> um, you know, it can do some pretty neat things, and I kind of want to talk about that because I get I get tired of seeing. EXE droppers. I just, you know, it's a personal pet peeve of mine. Um, and then we're going to talk about a proof of concept tool that we have called Eavesdrop, which is basically a passive reconnaissance tool. And we'll kind of show you some of the nifty things that it can do on a network. And I walked around yesterday sniffing the, the Wi Fi here. So we'll see if there's anything interesting in those graphs. All right, so straight on to Meterpreter. All right, so most of you guys know, but Meterpreter is an advanced in-memory payload. Um, what it allows you to do is basically when you exploit a box or take advantage of an exploit to a box, you can run all of your tools and scripts inside of memory, which provides a lot of anti-forensic capability as well as just you know ease to access certain aspects of the operating system. Um, it's extensible. There's multiple OSs. I hope you know, there's going to be a lot more work done on Meterpreter, and in fact, in the last month, we've seen huge advances. Meterpreter's gotten much, much more stable um, now that Rapid7 has acquired Metasploit, and so we'll see what, what new things have to come. And so it has a bunch of standard extensions. You have your standard API, which gives you kind of brute normal activities into the box, you know, being able to list processes, um, interact with memory, launch commands, so on and so forth, download, upload. You know, privilege where you can manipulate tokens and privileges inside of Windows, so you can actually become an administrator or another user, because oftentimes we want data. So there's lots of advantages to be able to basically mutate yourself and change your privileges on the fly. Um, and that also flies for incognito. Incognito, as many people probably know, is just a token hijacking tool. Um, and then we all, there's a bunch of other extensions as well for sniffing, which supports a similar to libpcap style sniffing interface that's in memory no DLL needed. Um, some good reading here. These are somewhat dated at this point, but still good reads. So kind of the bread and butter of the Meterpreter API is server extensions. And this is the really long path of where they exist. Um, and then you basically have command handlers, which you know define what kind of activities you can do. And the big ones that we're going to be caring about for what we're going to be talking about later in this talk is the four that we see here, process, image, memory, and thread. And these are kind of the basic building blocks inside of the Windows environment to accessing data that might be interesting to us. And so kind of a, a deeper look into the server extensions. You can see here that you have just a generic process extension for the command handler, which defines what call it is and then what function it calls when it's called. And so how these things are called, we'll get in a little further, but as, as you drill down into the actual, and he, these, these are the locations of these files. I want to make people aware of them because if you spend some time just looking through them, that's how you find out what Meterpreter is capable of doing. Um, for a long time, you just if you just assume going off of what examples are out there, you're going to be missing about 80 to 90% of the capabilities of Meterpreter. And so if you go digging in here, you can see things like, OK, you have the ability to open a process in Windows. And if you're familiar with the Windows API, that definitely helps, but it's not necessary. Um, MSDN has fairly good documentation, and you can quickly look these things up and figure out more or less what you're going to be able to do. And it gives you a nice Ruby interface to do it, which is fairly simplistic, fairly short, very terse, which is very nice, um, unless you don't know what you're looking for. So, this is just more for reference, so you can find out where these things are and kind of get an idea of you know some of the stuff that you can do there. So this is ba you know the basic call um, that you see. You get a handle to a process, open it with a certain memory type, and this is going to be this is leading up to what we're what we want to do. So you just call open on the process, and away you go. It's one line, 
and then you now have an in-memory handle to another process on the box, which you can then use to your heart's content. So let's go ahead and try a, uh, a demo of sorts. So I wanted to notice, I wanted people to uh, see this, because I'm crazy, I guess. Um, So the first thing we're going to show um, is, base, is basic process dumping. And there's a lot of tools out there that already do this. You know, PM dump, the process dump. In Metasploit, there's actually under tools, there's a memory dumper, which will dump section by section, which I find kind of annoying. But you have a multitude, a plethora of process dumpers. But they're all EXEs. And there was even you know, a talk about using MDD to dump memory. These things are all fine and good, but why go to all the trouble of having an in-memory resident server and then upload an exe and run it? I mean, what's, what's, there's, there's nothing sexy in that. Come on. So let's see if we actually get a session. OK, so we're on the box. Um, This version of Putty is so old that it defaults to Telnet. So the first thing, and I actually want, I'm going to show you So here's just a Ruby script for, process, for dumping a process. Um, we can go ahead and get it going as that it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, All right, so what we see here on the left is it's actually, it's walking the memories mapped in segments. And if they're allocated, it then dumps them. And this is the base size that it then increments up through. And it goes through the entire process space and dumps every single um, mapped memory segment. So, and what I can show you here, so it's just your general options. And basically, you know, the main thing that you need is you need a handle to the process you want to dump so you can read its memory. We are, of course, going all the way here with process all access, which is not necessarily needed for dumping memory. All you need really is read memory, but for simplicity's sake. And let's see. Let's, let's see how much code it actually takes to do this in just interpreter. This is this while loop. how many lines that is, but it's fairly simplistic. You query the memory, you get you know, a memory block information, you then go forward and just ask questions about it. And then when you find something that's good, you just you dump it. Um, I've provided in here a toggle that'll give you more information about the actual memory block that you're in, so that it's easier later when you find something useful in memory that you want, you can then go and find it. So I have here an older dump. We can actually look at the, the new one is, let's see if we're still going. Oh, we're actually done. Woohoo. So we can actually look at it. And it's just an ugly dump. This one I didn't toggle any information on. So if you just keep going down, it's literally just every single bit but no real guidelines of where you are in memory. So that's not as useful, but when you just want to pull the memory of something, like